It's official. Legacy banking and investments are here to stay in this space. Unsurprising to Bitcoiners, though, they're building their own moats. Welcome back, everyone. Saw this tweet yesterday out of Bitcoin Magazine, and I figured I'd dive into it because whenever I see that banks are going to start custodying and start getting more involved, I, I just immediately assume they are not going to be using any shitcoin innovations. And <clears throat> par for the course, Deutsche Bank is also not. Anyways, let's dive into it. $800 billion asset manager Deutsche Bank partners to offer Bitcoin custody for institutions. The bank can now hold crypto directly for clients. Okay, so we're going to dive into the article from Cointelegraph here. Deutsche Bank is set to offer customers cryptocurrency custody options through a partnership with cryptocurrency infrastructure platform Taurus. Taurus? No one's ever, no one's ever really heard of that. <laughs> no, no one hears about that in this space. All you hear about is A16Z and... All the rest of these Web3 development companies, who the hell is Taurus and where do they come from? I've actually said this uh, in the past. Um, I, I don't even remember which clip it was, but I'll try to dig it up. I think it had to do with Fidelity. But essentially, um, my assertion has been the whole entire time. Um, what the legacy banking and investment systems have been doing is they've been watching the space. Granted, they've been making some small investments. And to us, what may seem like huge money, this is pennies to them, right? When they invest in some of these companies, they invest millions. We're like, oh my gosh, they put millions. Do you really think it fucking matters when you print money out of thin air that you gave millions? It doesn't. They just, it's like putting your, it's it's like dipping your toes in the water, right? You just want to see, is the water cold? Is it warm? Can we swim? And that's exactly what these guys did. And now they can see that they can make shitloads of money. Why do you think they are going to give a crumb of that any longer to any of these little crappy altcoin institutions that have built themselves up in this space? Of course not. They are just going to absolutely wreck them and take it over. And I'm not applauding that. I'm not applauding that. I don't think this is good. I'm just saying that's what it is. This is what's happening. Anyways, let's let's continue on here. The German bank was one of a handful of companies to invest in a 65 million Series B fundraising round for Taurus in February 2023. The company offers enterprise-grade infrastructure to issue, manage, custody, and trade cryptocurrencies, tokenized assets, non-fungible tokens, and other digital assets. It's almost like they knew that because they're a part of the existing system, if they just reinvent the wheel, everyone's going to hop onto their tech. Who could have foreseen that? According to Taurus co-founder Lamin Brahimi, the partnership underwent a thorough and very detailed due diligence process before the German bank decided uh, to use its infrastructure services. I, I'm pretty sure the conversation went a little bit like this. You're going to do what we say. Yes. You're one of us. Yes. All right. Let's go. <laughs> That's pretty much it. You're going to play our game? Yep. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Announcing the partnership, Deutsche Bank Global Security Services head Paul Maley said the cryptocurrency space is expected to grow to trillions of dollars in assets and will likely become a priority for investors and institutions. That's right, guys. It's almost like they're fortune tellers. Deutsche Bank Singapore and Memento Blockchain recently completed a proof of concept project called DAMA, Digital Assets Management Access, which allows for the management of digital funds in tokenized securities. Founded in Switzerland in 2018, Taurus' Series B round was led by Credit Suisse and included the likes of Deutsche Bank alongside Arab Bank Switzerland, indicating major interest from traditional finance banks. This is what we've been saying already for a very long time. The announcement of its Series B round also closely outlined Taurus's aim to serve Tier 1 banks in Europe. Brahimi also told Cointelegraph that the platform serves close to 30 banks, with most deals going beyond cryptocurrencies to include the tokenization of equity, debt, and other products. Who would have thought, right? Somebody they're already working with, somebody they're already partnered with, just so happens to create a platform that does what existing platforms already do, but the difference is they're on their team. <laughs> they can be controlled specifically by them. So anyways, this is, 
I find this absolutely comical. Anyways, anyways, let's dive into this. Let's take a look at, at Taurus, right? Let's see. They, they raised $65 million. Taurus raises USD $65 million to further develop its digital asset platform and fuel international expansion. Taurus' Series B round is led by Credit Suisse and included participation from new institutional investors, such as Deutsche Bank, Pictet Group, Cedar Mundy Ventures, as well as from Series A investors, Arab Bank Switzerland, and Investus, a stock-listed real estate group. Interesting real estate, huh? Taurus co-founders, here we go. Lamine Brahimi, Sebastian Decimos, Oren Olivier Puder, and Dr. Jean-Philippe Amousson remain the largest shareholders of Taurus at the helm of the company. The transaction was approved by the Swiss regulator FINMA. We're not going to go through every single one of uh, the people on this board, but just for the sake of it, we're going to take a look at Lamine and we're going to take a look at Sebastian. So here we go. Let's let, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at Sebastian's LinkedIn. Right? Okay. So non-executive board member at Alpian, growth stage Series C Swiss and U.S. tech companies, and this is where this is where I think it gets kind of interesting. FinTech Commission for Swiss banking, right in Zurich, Switzerland. <laughs> so that's interesting, huh? That he would have started a product for digital assets and somehow got approval from. It's all just coincidences, guys. We're we're wearing tinfoil hats. We're just idiot plebs. I'm definitely an idiot pleb, that's for sure. Uh, but that's okay. Idiot pleb or not, I can Google. <laughs> Anyways, let's continue. All right, let's take a look at Sebastian Decimos. He previously held several C-level executive and board-level positions for leading asset management firms with strong expertise in product development, trading, IT business development, and transformation. He worked five years at SYZ Asset Management as Chief Operating Officer, member of the Executive Committee, and board member, and this is this is the key right here, board member of several regulated entities. Previously, Sebastian spent three years at Brevin Howard, the largest European hedge fund. As managing director and head of the Swiss office, Sebastian Decimos also worked at Lombard Odier, notably as head of hedge fund business development and investment manager. Sebastian spent five years as a senior management consultant at McKinsey & Company. Sebastian started his own career as an engineer in the Silicon Valley for 3Com Corporation. Now, granted, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, you know, I just want to give some background. Right. But the key, the key of it is that he was a board member of several regulated entities. And you can see that he has a very positive relationship with the groups that he's going to be working with. And that is, of course, no coincidence. So, look, the reality is this. And this is something that I've said in the past. And I know that people don't want to believe it. And I know, especially when you're holding a bag of shit coins, right? Especially when you have this sunk cost bias, you've been holding on to this bag for like five years. It's done nothing. OK, and you're sitting here and you're like, I don't get it. I don't get it because, guys, the, the truth is they are not going to use your shitcoin rail. OK, and if they do, if they do use your shitcoin rail, what you need to understand is that token has absolutely no string attached to it. OK, in order, there's no contract behind it that, that you somehow deserve to extract value out of it. You want to extract value out of something? Go and take a look at being a shareholder. Yeah, shares are shit coins, equities are shit coins, but guess what? They are not as shitty as actual shit coins that have zero ties to the issuing authority or the company that issues it, which is pretty much the same thing. But anyways, the whole point is, is that this is what we've said the whole time. Indeed, the institutions are going to come here. Indeed, they want to make money but they are not going to use your shitcoin. They are going to build their own rails. It's it's stupid for them not to. They get to control everything in house. Why? Why would they give themselves the counterparty risk of then having to be at the beck and call of some other company that controls their platform? Why would they do that? They have no reason. Right? We always talk about how, you know, we're, no one's better than their incentives. But for some reason, the banks are going to use some shit coin rail. Don't be an idiot. Okay? <laughs> That's not what's happening. They're building their own rails. They have their own moat. They've been watching and dipping their toes in the ecosystem for a few years now. That is our clip for today.
like, subscribe, help us grow the Pleb Underground channel. And I will catch you all next week.